ETA, Blanc Pan, Glass Huta Original, Breguet, Harry Winston, Omega, Longines, Tissot, Mido, Certina, and finally, Rado. Well, to name a few. Have you heard of these watchmakers? Well, probably, but depending on where you live in the world, you may have not heard of any of these or maybe even seen them in person. Like, Rado? Or Harry Winston? I'm not kidding, this isn't a bit. I have never heard of Harry Winston. You're a wizard, Harry. It is 1.38 p.m. Let's get down to business. <laughs> So okay, we've listed a bunch of watchmakers, uh, what's the point? Well, they all have one thing in common, and that's Swatch Group. So, I guess today we're gonna talk about why Swatch Group ruins everything. Period. Like, instead of actually promoting various brands and marketing them, the Swatch Group has actually just decided to play a game of keep away from Omega. Like, let's face it, Omega's the only watchmaker, the only brand that Swatch Group holds that Swatch Group actually cares about. But there is a close second, and I know what you guys might be thinking. Um, Blanc Pan, right? Blanc Pan is uh, just incredibly rich history, incredibly high level of watchmaking, especially when we take a look at the Villeray series. Uh, or perhaps Breguet, right? Breguet is one of the earliest watchmakers ever, so they would be a close second to Swatch Group, right? Uh, no, the close second after Omega would probably be Hamilton. You see, Swatch Group uses Hamilton to leverage deals with Hollywood to make Hamilton essentially an in-house Hollywood watchmaker. That's why pretty much in every blockbuster, there's a Hamilton on the main character's wrist. But to all the other brands, including heavy hitters like Breguet and Blanc Pan, they just get crumbs. And don't even get me started on Rado, okay? Uh, brands like Rado, at least in the US, they don't exist, right? Like, as an American, I can count on one hand the amount of times I have seen a Rado in the wild. It's like a super ultra rare Pokemon. And the odd thing is that Rado isn't even particularly unattainable. It's not like they're ridiculously uh, sought after, so they're like hyper rare and hard to find. It's not that they're super duper expensive. They're actually one of the more affordable brands in the Swatch Group lineup. They just do not exist in the US market. I think Rado's main uh, target demographic is in Pakistan so they're not spending any time marketing Rado in the West really unfortunate because the new ceramic Captain Cook actually looks pretty interesting especially the one with the blue bezel I, I dig it and I gotta be honest with you guys I had to look up what a Harry Winston was and uh, yeah they're ugly and super expensive oh my god but all jokes aside like all things point to Swatch Group being the problem child in the watch world I mean, guys, they kind of led the way when it came to killing Basel World, and I'm not upset about that. I mean, Basel World had a lot of its own problems and yada, 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 but when Swatch Group said none of their brands would be making an appearance during Basel World, yeah, that was kind of the beginning of the end, and then the pandemic kind of, yeah, that was the last nail in the coffin. But the issue is that I think Swatch Group said that they were going to do their own, like, Swatch Group show, and that's never come to fruition. It seems like Swatch Group is just far too busy making far too many Omega models. And it's not like Swatch Group is producing Omegas, but they're definitely giving them the budget to produce limited edition after limited edition after limited edition. I'm sick of it. The Swatch Group's cool at that, right? They want limited editions from Omega because it makes Omega look way cooler. And Omega is Swatch Group's baby. And it's a shame, okay? Longines, moving up. They have a ton of really cool watches. Even their uh, ceramic Hydro Conquest with the uh, kind of olive drab colorway, I really dig it. Uh, that mono pusher they have, a bunch of their really cool heritage watches. I absolutely love it. I've made an episode about all the current Longines that I think are, are moving up in the world, but nobody hears about them, right? Nobody really hears about them because they are not marketed and uh, Swatch Group has other things to do. What about Mito? Mito's consistently one of the coolest watchmakers in the Swatch Group umbrella, and uh, most of my viewers have really never heard of them, because whenever I recommend a Mito on this channel, I get a ton of messages in my inbox being like, who's Mito? What's a Mito? And unless you currently live in Eastern Europe, you are not exposed to Certina modern day. 
period. I don't think there are many authorized dealers in the US for Certina. Certina doesn't have a big market in the US, which is a bummer because they make a ton of really cool watches. Their vintage pieces were the best and their modern watches are really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, if you're an American, good luck. If Swatch Group is gonna hold on to these various brands, allow them to flourish, support them, do what you're supposed to do as a holding group. Don't siphon off resources and just give them to Omega at the expense of other really fun watchmakers. And guys, listen, I'm not trying to hate on Omega. You guys know I'm an Omega owner. I'm a huge fan of Omega. In fact, I think I like more modern Omegas than modern Rolexes at this point, but I'm not a hater, okay? I just think that if other brands in Swatch Group's holding were, were marketed as heavily, I'm talking about Rado, Certina, Blanc Pan, we'd be seeing more of them. Dude, oh my God, don't get me started on Glass Huta. We would be seeing more of these really awesome watchmakers. They'd be selling more of these products so everyone would be happy. But from a strictly business standpoint, I understand Omega Moves products and Swatch Group is probably very resistant towards deviating at all from something that is working, right? If it's not broke, don't fix it. But it's a shame okay omega is their cash cow if swatch group took a risk and pivoted towards some of their other potential big money makers class huta blanc pont things like this they're just content with letting these really cool watches fall by the wayside but this is just one guy's opinion all right so i understand a lot of you guys are probably a-okay with what swatch group is doing a lot of you guys are probably going to defend omega to the death even though i'm really not complaining about Omega. But regardless, I would love to hear your opinion. So please, let's have an open dialogue in the comment section and I will hear from you there. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you learned something. Maybe this gave you some perspective. I want you to give me some perspective and comments really do help my videos out in the algorithm. So the more you comment, the better my channel does. And I really do appreciate it. Check out all the affiliate links in the description below. We have watches, watch winders, watch toolkits, pretty much everything the watch collector needs in those affiliate links. So when you click through those, you help the channel out a bunch. You can check out my personal website, thetimetellershop.com. That is the number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches handpicked by me. And another really cool project we are working on is the T3 Time to Drive channel. We have a bunch of content going up there weekly and uh, it's for all you gearheads, all you petrol heads out there. Uh, you can find everything automotive related um, over there. So guys, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I will see you on the next one. I'm Jory Goodman and always remember I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs> Dab.